Let's actually bring people up to speed okay. <laughs> with, with what this study is, what we're actually talking about. Um, you've kind of alluded to it, but what's the origin story behind this study? I know that Louis Sahoyas, he, he came to you with an idea. He did. Yeah. Wasn't even my idea. So he was looking for uh, a follow-up to Game Changers. So that was vegan athletes. This is a very interesting angle to make a documentary about. And there, there are clearly some issues with Game Changers. And there's some really cool, irrefutable facts from Game Changers that are also pretty stunning and fun, but I won't go there. That's a different movie. So in trying to build on that, that was sort of a unique twist. He thought, wow, maybe uh, we should look at the microbiome and we should use health and we, we could do a study that was a thread underlying a new feature film. We'll bring in lots of different topics, but there is an amusing factor here. I, I hope this is gonna make sense if I jump ahead and then jump back. So he wanted to do identical twins. I said, what, where's that coming from? Wow, I mean, that's kind of interesting. Recruitment is the hardest thing in any study. And Constraining it to identical twins is like, that's madness. Right. You're Why? narrowing the pool. Why would you do that? Um, on the other hand, it's sort of, well, that's like one leg up in science and control. When we randomize people to different diets and RCTs, randomized control trials are better than observational epi for cause and effect along the causal inference pathway. That'd be like controlling for genetics. That would be like doing a crossover study without a crossover. When you do a crossover, you are your own control. But what if your twin is your control because they have the same genetics, same height, got raised the same way. So it sounded really interesting to do this. I'm going to leap ahead to being in the middle of the study. And one of the staff uh, writes me and says, there may be a problem here. We've looked uh, at YouTube and there is a YouTube of identical twins going vegan an omnivore somebody has done this. And so I quickly dial it up and I, I look at it and it's a pair of twins at a Tim Spector study who has a thousand twins in the UK, Tim Spector, who's part of Zoe. And they go on and on about this thing and the study. And so I get really nervous and I call Tim Spector up and I said, oh my God, dude, I never saw this study. Did you ever publish this? And he said, that's not a study. That was one pair of twins that went rogue and they're influencers in the UK, and they made a little video about themselves doing this. And they got some media coverage. I remember it popping up on my phone. Yeah, it was pretty funny. So I was sort of terrified and then relieved, and I called Louis on the phone. I said, Louis, if you ever see this, I want to assure you, Tim Spector has told me this is not a study. So no one has scooped us on this. We will be the first to do a study out of this. And he said, Dude, that's how I got the idea. I saw the video. <laughs> I saw the video and then thought, wouldn't that be cool if somebody did a study? So isn't that kind of fun? Yeah, that shout out to those two guys <laughs> for, for planting the seed. Louis got the idea because that planted the seed. And he was looking for somebody who's really interested in the microbiome. And actually, he's interested in everything. But he thought it would be really fascinating to have a published study as the thread that held everything together. So he approached me and I thought, and it was, he was very specific about the vegan diet. So the twins that had done this, one was vegan and one was omnivore. So I'm very much a plant-based proponent. Uh, I'm pretty much vegan myself, but I'm not a proselytizing vegan. I'm all in for usually eggs, yogurt, fish. There's, there's all kinds of healthy animal yeah, products. You've unpacked that on the show before. Yeah, I'm not really a hardcore vegan proselytizer. So this, uh, but... And a number, sounded, a number of the, sorry to interrupt, but a number of the other uh, authors or um, other scientists involved in this paper, they were not vegan, right? Oh, yeah. No. So my lab group isn't all vegan. You don't have like a rule. You can work in the Gardner lab if you are vegan and otherwise forget it. I think that's an important point to kind of underscore because some of the uh, claims that I've seen or people that are saying we shouldn't you know, trust the results from this study have seemed to suggest that this is a vegan plant-based team of scientists who had some type of agenda. The vegan mafia <laughs> have to get you. No, we're really scientists. We're pretty objective and we eat a wide range of things. I don't even know who is or isn't vegan or vegetarian in my group. Never comes up. I would never want them to feel uncomfortable. But fun study idea thinking, 
Yeah, so I've studied ketogenic, Mediterranean, low fat, low carb. This is my thing. So I actually love the challenge of coming up with not a single nutrient, not a single food, but a diet pattern. In fact, I was the writing chair of an American Heart Association scientific statement that just came out trying to provide an overview of different dietary patterns as they relate to heart disease. And it's really challenging. Dietary patterns are, are pretty vague, but well known. A lot of those names I, I just mentioned, plus paleo, plus low fat vegan, plus pescatarian. A lot of people followed diets like that, but to do a study of it is much more challenging than just studying grams of fiber, grams of saturated fat, soy, or something like that. And I love that challenge. Mm -hmm. Come back to the twin component. Ready. So let's just clarify why that is interesting or special. I was listening to uh, Mark Hyman did a podcast on the study. And I've met Mark before. So just on the record, I think he's a nice guy. Uh, but I do sort of respectfully disagree with some of the things that were in that in that episode, which I'm sure will come up today. But on this idea of removing genetics as a variable, Mark said, and I'm quoting here, the twin component added very little value. You can control for genetics in ordinary randomized controlled trials. The twin element was kind of weird. Yeah, so that's pretty odd. So I don't know anybody that can control for genetics in a randomized controlled trial. So there, there's, you know, a bazillion DNA nucleotides out there. There's th hundreds of thousands of single nucleotide polymorphisms. I don't know how you can control for hundreds of thousands. Maybe he was thinking of controlling for like one gene. Possibly, yeah. But, but so far for most of the issues, now that we've unraveled the DNA, that never panned out the way people had hoped that there would be one or two single nucleotide polymorphisms that explained a large proportion of some kind of health outcome. And for a few rare diseases, that is true. But for something in particular, excess weight, obesity, uh, that's gone back and forth from 50 to 200 SNPs. And when you put them all together, it explains no more than 5% of differentials. And so, no, you can't control for that by just knowing everyone's DNA. So wrong. Okay, come, coming back to the origin story and I guess the study premise. So there was this cool idea to bring in identical twins and randomize them to different dietary patterns. Yes. Okay, so what did that look like? So that looked like finding these twins, which in fact, there was a little bit of a miscommunication. So when they approached us, they said, we promise it won't be hard. We found all the twins for you. When we called all the twins that they found, they didn't all want to play. Um, turned out Stanford had recently sort of inherited a twin registry. And so when we went to the Stanford twin registry, that's actually where we got most of them. And we had a budget set and we could only really handle about 40 to 50 people total or 20 to 25 pairs of identical twins. So I just want to say up front that the, uh, I actually got a lot of love from colleagues thinking, oh my God, that was brilliant used identical twins. No one does that in nutrition studies. That sort of added an extra level of rigor. Personally, I recognized it as an entertainment opportunity. People are fascinated with twins. I didn't realize this when I was starting the study. I really looked at it from the scientific perspective. I think that the Java Network Open publication that came out got much more attention than it would have if it had not been identical twins. And I don't think the idea, now that we've gone back and looked at it, so hopefully you'll geek out on this. We did a lot of very appropriate statistical analyses, but at the end, there's one that you could do just to see how big a difference the twins made. And you could do a matched pairs t-test, or you could do a two sample t-test. And what that means is the matched pairs is what you do if it was only you up at two time points and you'd be compared to yourself. That would be much tighter statistically than you compared to me. So in theory, if the twins made a big difference, then doing one that kept the twin in a, into account versus just treating them as two random samples of people, you could see in this very simple statistical test how much of a difference it would make. It didn't really change any of the outcomes. Oh, they, wow. they all came out the same. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have known this ahead of time. If you had asked me ahead of time, 
how much of a difference do you think it will make to so match the twins? So what's the significance of that? The significance of it is that I don't think, like I, I won't in my next study intentionally look for identical twins because it will increase the statistical rigor of my study. It had a, maybe a modest effect in increasing the rigor. Probably not worth the extra trouble to recruit twins and probably not worth people commenting saying, oh, this isn't generalizable, it's only generalizable to identical twins because that's who you recruited. Mm -hmm.